Basically, when we're looking at rib mechanics, again, we might have a person have a ring that slid to the side. So that's going to create a different rotation through the ribs. So if, you, if I was going to work either uh, anterior medially on this side or posterior lateral on the other side, all depending on how they're shifted. So I'll do the same like we did this morning. If I wanted to work on they were in a posterior lateral and I want to get them into anterior medial, from an osteokinematic point, I need to take the rib and bring it anterior medial. So I have to be able to find the angle of the rib. I have to palpate down to know where that rib is and the scapula gets in the way. I need to take up the soft tissue and I need to say, okay, that's what I need, anterior medial. The associated head motion, even though I'm on the borderline here, would be rotation to the right. So then if I get to rotation to the right and I shift them this way, I can fix from the front and I can have them take a short breath out and then a long, sorry, short breath in and then a long breath out. And as he breathes out, I move that rib into anterior medial. How I got here was that he was either shifted or when I checked the mobility of his head rotation or breathing out, he was not moving anterior medial. So if he was rotating his head to the right, I would notice this instead of that. So no motion into anterior medial. Or when he took a short breath in and then breath breathe out, no motion was there, where on an out breath, he should move anterior medial. One joint does not make a dysfunction when it comes to the thoracic spine. So this might be a stacking issue. So we may have to do a shift correction and see if that fixes it. If it doesn't, then I'm going to do some kind of manipulation to the rib. If I go to the other side of the ring, I can work on posterior lateral. So now if I'm working on that same dysfunction where he was shifted, I can I'm going to still get on the ring on the opposite side, but instead of bringing it this way, I'm going to bring it the other way. So instead of him turning towards me, he'll turn, yeah, sorry, he will turn towards me because then we'll move the rib into this position. And then he'll take a short breath out and a long breath in, and then I can bring the rib into that. Most of my application of that force is on the angle of the rib in, and then I'm gripping, so I'm not doing pressure on that outside because we don't want pressure on the lateral side of the rib. So we can work on sliding the ring, seeing if that changes the posterior lateral, but if he's not moving posterior lateral, we'll try some muscle assist. So if I was working on a posterior lateral motion, I get on the opposite transverse process, I get on the angle of the rib. If I wanted, I could have him turn his head to the left. <laughs> Somehow I manage that, I usually get that wrong. And then have him take a short breath out and a long breath in, and then I can work on that posterior lateral glide, or I can assess the posterior lateral glide. If I was going to do anterior medial, what I would do is have his head turn in the opposite direction. I can get on the angle of the rib, almost the same hand position, but instead of pushing this way, I'm pulling. And instead of him breathing in, he's breathing out. So take a short breath in and a long breath out, and I pull him in the other direction. I could check the active arm test. I could see if he's stacked this way. Uh, I prefer the sitting ones just because there's more utility, I think, over time because once the thoracic cage is loaded, that's when your rings are going to shift a little bit more. 